Remember last week's story? Peter denied Jesus three times, lying and telling people that he did not know Jesus and that he never followed him when Jesus was arrested and crucified. Peter was afraid, he was scared, and he did the unforgivable thing, he sinned. But in today's story, we're, gonna, we're going to hear, will Jesus forgive Peter? So Peter had just heard from Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, that Jesus was alive. His tomb was empty and the angel told them that Jesus had risen from the dead. Could it be true? Peter and the other disciples didn't need to wander long because Jesus appeared to them twice. There was no doubt about it that it was Jesus. But Peter had denied Jesus. Could their friendship ever be the same? Peter decided to go back to what he knew. So he went fishing. Peter and six other disciples were out all night fishing, but they didn't catch anything. Suddenly, a stranger on the shore shouted to them, Have you caught anything? The disciples answered, No, we've been fishing all night and have caught nothing. Then the stranger said, Why don't you put your net on the other side? They did, and guess what? The net came back, bursting with fish. Does this part sound familiar? Remember when Peter first met Jesus and started following him? The same thing had happened. Remember Jesus told Peter to put the net to the other side? And Peter listened. So it's very similar how Jesus, um, the situation happened again. The disciples looked over at the stranger at the shore. At this point, they still don't know that it is actually Jesus. Suddenly, John recognized who actually it was. Peter, he exclaimed, it is the Lord. The disciple hurried to shore and Jesus told them to bring some of the fish they had caught. You see, Jesus had already built a fire and was preparing breakfast for them. Peter went back to the boat and hauled all the heavy net to the shore with all the fish and they counted 153 fish in the net. It was a miracle, something only God can do. It was one way, one more way Jesus showed his disciples that he is God and that he was truly alive. Then Jesus invited them, come and eat with me. The disciples sat down and Jesus served them. This was the third time actually Jesus had revealed himself to them. When they were finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked, Do you love me? And Peter said, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Okay. Again, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Peter, do you love me? And now th by this time, Peter was kind of feeling hurt because Jesus had asked him the, for the third time over and again, over again, the same question, do you love me? But you see, Jesus was asking Peter the same number of times that Peter had denied knowing Jesus. Jesus wanted Peter to know that he forgave him and that he had a big plan for Peter's life. Jesus told Peter to feed my lambs and take care of my sheep because this meant to, um, for Peter to tell others about Jesus and help them to grow to know Jesus better. Remember how Jesus told the disciples that they would become fishers of men? Jesus reached out to Peter in love and forgiveness. And I remember, you know, Pastor Q talking about Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me? Like agape love, meaning unconditional love. But Peter was understanding that as phileo love, meaning friendship kind of love. You know, like, you know, you love your friends, like a friend. So Peter was saying, yes, Jesus, I love you. You know, you're my best friend. We're good friends. I followed you. But Jesus was asking, do you love me because I love you unconditionally, no matter what, even when you sin, do you love, love, I love you. Jesus was trying to bring that point to Peter. Jesus ended the conversation with Peter with the same words he said when he first met Peter. Follow me. And Peter did. He still sinned and needed to confess his sin sometimes. But even though he didn't follow Jesus perfectly, Jesus still had a big plan for Peter's life. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Um, I just think it's so beautiful that Jesus asked us to follow him. You know, we sometimes... I feel like I'm too weak, I'm too young, I can't, I'm too powerless, I can't do anything. But Jesus still calls us to follow him. 
And did you know that Jesus has a big plan for you too? So, you know, like I said, sometimes we feel too weak, too young, too powerless to achieve the things that Jesus commanded us to do. But and sometimes we sin and we feel like we're not good enough. Maybe you lied to avoid getting in trouble. Maybe you lost your temper and said some bad words. Uh, maybe you looked at things on the computer that you shouldn't. And how can you continue your friendship with God after you sin? But first, you have to make sure that you know Jesus as your Savior. And if you're wondering about that, talk to your parents or you can call me. If you're sure you know Jesus as your Savior, then you have to remember God's promise for you. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. To confess, it means to tell God that you know what you did was against God and that it was wrong. But because God keeps His promises, you can know God has forgiven you by the blood of Jesus when He died on the cross for our sins. And God, the Holy Spirit, can help us to have self-control. It is important to spend some time praying with God every single day, confessing our sins and asking God for help. Let's not let sin get in the way. We have big plans. Jesus has big plans for us. We can't let sin get in the way of us achieving those plans. So pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Remember, Jesus forgives sins and He loves you.